Welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special guest is here with us today, Claire Lopez. She's a friend of ATP. She's an international scholar. She's known around the world for her expertise in international terrorism, uh, jihad, uh, many things in the intelligence community that she can't talk about, i.e. the CIA. And she's the founder president of Lopez Liberty LLC. Welcome back, Claire. Hello, Barry. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be back with you. Oh, me too. Uh, in this segment, we are going to discuss The Naked Communist, a highly prophetic book from the 1950s. We covered parts of it where Mr. Skousen, the author, a former FBI agent and prolific author and scholar, literally said what was going to happen. We're going to pick up the discussion. Number 22, continue discrediting American culture. Yeah, this is, this is a really sad one, isn't it? I mean, uh, part of this goes to what was taught in the curriculum uh, of the different schools. And the, the, the students are, are literally taught from communist uh, textbooks. For example, one written by Howard Zinn, Z-I-N-N, -N, um, a communist from, from a long time ago. But his history books are, to this day, being introduced into the high school level of American schools, where the students are taught, you know, Christopher Columbus was, was a murderer, uh, and our founding fathers were all evil slaveholders, et cetera. And, and then you wonder, well, why are they tearing down the statues? Some of them, they don't even know who they are, but, but they're statues, so they tear them down. But the, 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 the denigration, um, you know, of American history, of what makes America great. Not to say that we haven't made mistakes or those shouldn't be taught, but that this place is the last best hope of mankind on earth, the shining city on a hill that's given more opportunity to more people than any other government in the entire history of the human race, and they're being taught to hate it. And yeah, no question. Number 24. Eliminate all laws governing obscenity. Yeah, you notice this. I mean, first it gets into the pop culture, right? And, um, you know, the rap culture and, and, and that sort of, well, air quotes, music, right? Um, which is just laden with four-letter words. Um, and, I mean, you can hardly understand what they're saying anyway, but, but when you do understand, it comes out as a four-letter word. But, but also the commonality of, 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 of using cuss words, obscenity, uh, the mainstreaming of pornography. Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. That's just a choice you make. This is what that, they, they have succeeded. They've done it. Oh yeah, you go right into number 25, which is the perfect segue, break down cultural standards of morality by promoting pornography and obscenity. We're there. Yeah, we're there and, and have been, I mean, sadly for, for quite some time to where, you know, younger generations, we keep going back and there's some wonderful young people in this world. Um, but too many of them, the ones that we see on our TV screens, um, you know, and in, in these, these videos that have to get bleeped out every other second, um, it, it, it's become, they, they have been taught that this is something normal and natural and all stigma about using uh, obscenity um, is, is, is gone. Here's in a different direction, and I see this happening, number 27, infiltrate the churches and replace religion with social religion. Exactly, and my first exposure to this uh, was when I was serving at the U.S. Embassy down in San Salvador, El Salvador in the late 1980s, and I saw the rebel guerrillas down there who were armed, funded, trained by Cuba and Soviet Russia at the time, um, being assisted and supported by the liberation theology um, teaching of the Jesuits, Marinol priests, and others of the Catholic Church down there. They were the ones that brought that, uh, especially the Jesuits, that, that thinking that, you know, that, that, that religion is not something just about between you and the Almighty and looking towards the afterlife and, and living a good life in order to, uh, you know, get to that afterlife. Uh, but rather, it is about the here and the now, about turning earth into paradise. And the, on the Jewish side, 
there is something of the same idea that's been twisted out of the, uh, the, the concept of Tikkun Olam, which has been completely uh, uh, twisted from its original meaning, which is getting right between yourself and with the Almighty, especially on the occasion of Rosh Hashanah, um, and, and, and turned again the same way into something earthly, into something here and now, into something like a social justice agenda. Yeah, I know I have a problem with Tikkun Olam um, in its modern form, which has turned into a socialistic, mm -hmm. uh, save the world religion. And there's no supreme being. It's how do you do things socially to enhance life? And then you integrate the weirdness into it. Here's one that I, I'm stunned how this is literally mainstream now. I mean, it, get, this one gives me goosebumps from 65 years ago. Number 29, discredit the American Constitution. Yeah, I mean, this goes right along with what we were talking about with the students, the books, uh, the curricula, uh, getting inside the teachers associations and teachers unions. This is of a piece. This is all part of the same different points here, different goals, but, but all, you know, of a piece with tearing down America, tearing down uh, not just statues, but the very foundations upon which the framers of our constitution based our, our system, our system of law and order. Um, tearing all of that down, denigrating it, uh, uh, discrediting it in the eyes of students. And those students grew up to be what? Maybe teachers themselves, maybe professors, they go into media, they go into the government. That's how it's spread throughout our, our society. And it's, it's just, it's heartbreaking to see it. It's perfect that we're talking about this week, Claire, because you're seeing George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Paine, they're all coming down. And nobody that's pulling down statues has read a word of what these brilliant, brilliant scholars invented. In, this, in the 18th century. It's, it's so sad. Check out this one. Number 35, discredit and eventually dismantle the FBI. Look there? what the FBI did to Trump. Yeah, are we there? Yeah. Uh, and if you look at, at a book, at a writer like Diana West and her book called American Betrayal and her, her blog, which is at uh, her name, Diana West, she writes extensively about how communist uh, ideology and individuals uh, who, who, who studied and who were drawn in to communist ideology got into our national security agencies. The CIA, you've got John Brennan, who openly admitted uh, to his interviewers when he was trying to join the, uh, the CIA, yes, yes, I voted for Gus Hall, uh, in an election, a leader of the, the, uh, the Communist Party of the United States. And then you look at somebody like a James Comey, uh, whose apparent philo philosophical guiding light uh, was uh, Reinhold Niebuhr. Um, and, and you look at the, the Ors, Nellie Orr, Bruce Orr. How did people like these with communist connections and ideologies and sympathies rise to the highest levels of our, of our national security? And so, of course, Yes, those agencies are discredited now. Now what do we do? Well, here's the scariest one of all, and I'm, this is right out of yesterday's headlines. Number 38, this just shocks me this was written in the 50s. Transfer some of the powers of arrest from the police to social agencies. That's happening in cities coast to coast, Claire. Almost this, word for word. This week, Claire. Yes. This week. Yes, yes. It may be one of the last of these goals that they've gotten around to, but uh, yes, this was not something that just happened willy-nilly. It didn't just happen by, uh, you know, circumstance. This was planned. This was calculated. Uh, and this was executed. Yeah. And, and, and it's happening from coast to coast as we speak. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report today and a special thanks to Claire Lopez. Claire, tell our viewers how they can find you, please. 
Well, I uh, am working on a uh, website that I don't have quite yet, but in the meantime, you can find me on Twitter at Claire M. Lopez. I'm on Parlay as well now at Claire M. Lopez, and in my name too uh, at Facebook. I write at the United West. I do videos also at Sharia Crime Stoppers, and you can find my pieces also published at the Citizens Commission on National Security, ccnationalsecurity.org. Wonderful. Please go check her out. She's a scholar. You need to learn from her. And don't forget to subscribe to our text message service by sending the word TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to 88202, push send. You'll be subscribed to all of our videos and reports absolutely free. It'll come to your cell phone every couple of days, and you'll never pay for any of it. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.